Welcome to Lit Crit as Fuck, the audio experience in which I say shit about stuff and you listen to junk. Previously on Lit Crit as Fuck. Flashback sound. Dimitri wants money, 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 money. Dimitri is betrothed to a woman named Katya. woman named Grushinka. The ecclesiastical courts. Asking Alyosha to come Yvonne and see her. makes the argument that there should be no smart, separation of church and state. doesn't really believe in God and stuff. Oh my God, right? Dimitri finally the showed up. Kool Aid man of the brothers' karma. So. To make Have a fjord of it. I'm afraid of Yvonne. He just grows up as a service six-year-old man off a cab. And Zosima bows down to Dimitri. Why is such a man? To the parasite. Why does he want to anything? I have been to the dark side. I have seen a world that no man should see. Title card. The Brothers Karamatsa by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Part 3. Demons and Donkeys. What did you mean when you said, feel my skills, donkey, 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 donkey? <laughs> The word sensualist is used a lot in this book, so I think I might want to dig a little bit into what is meant by that word. It's used specifically to describe the Karamazovs, but I think that it could easily be used to describe every single character in the entire book in some way, because it can be used to describe every human being. The Karamazov way is a little bit more intense than the average human. You want to feel pain and pleasure if you are a Karamazov. The suffering that a sensualist wants to endure alongside the pleasure is an existential suffering. They don't want to be like punched in the face. You want to be like staring at the mirror at yourself, loathing yourself while you get like the most amazing blowjob. That's the Karamazov way. Grushinka falls into the same category. Grushinka is at her core also a Karamazov. So is Maximov. Smirjikov may be the only character in this book that is not in any way a sensualist, like at all. So after the crazy meeting at the monastery, Alyosha is on his way to see Katya. He takes a shortcut and he bumps into Dmitri. Dmitri's been drinking a bit. He's a little drunk and he is reciting poetry. That's what's happening. It's not pretty. I assume that that's a pretty standard Russian state of drunkness. So he tells Alyosha a bunch of junk. This is an info dump right here about what happened with Katya initially, why they're engaged, and the fact that he is now in love with Grushinka. While in the army, Dmitri was stationed in a small town. His superior officer was a guy who had two daughters and money problems. One of his daughters is Katya. Dimitri decides that he wants to corrupt her in some way for the fun of it. Dimitri offers to give her the money that her father needs to stay out of prison, but in order to get it, she has to meet him at late at night in a bedroom. Not a mean, not a mean, not 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 a mean, say no more. And then she gets there, and he has all these horrible, horrible thoughts about how he wants to make a complete fool of her. But then, at the very last minute, he realizes that he can't do it. So instead, he writes a check out to her, opens the door, and bows respectfully. Then she bows back to him. So. Whoa! A new thing just occurred to me while I was rereading everything. Something that hadn't occurred to me before. You see, Katya bowed in a very specific way, all the way down to the floor, her forehead hitting the ground. When Zosima bows to him the way that he does, way back at the monastery meeting one whole episode ago when Zosima did that, remember? Remember when he did, when he bowed? Dimitri goes, oh God, and he runs out of the room as if this had some kind of meaning to him. It's because he bowed exactly the way that Katya had which means I'm going 100% the road of Father Zosima has prophetic powers. There are demons, devils, magic, and dragons! Sometime after the events with Dmitri and the bedroom, Katya inherits a good amount of money from a relative. She then decides that she's going to ask Dmitri to marry her. So they're betrothed because apparently Dmitri was like, yeah, cool, let's get married. Totally. I want to do that. So Dmitri came back just because he needed money. But what happens when when he gets back to town is that Fyodor Pavlovich asks Grushinka to get Dmitri in trouble by trying to sue him for some IOUs. Dmitri says he went initially to beat Grushinka because that's what you do. That's your first instinct. You beat them. You just beat them. And he got there to beat her and instead... Hello. We don't see that scene. We get to pretend what happens there. But he definitely just falls in love with her instead of beating her, which is nice that he didn't beat her. But uh-oh, 
he's engaged to somebody else. What's he gonna do? He doesn't really think that's a big deal. He's kind of like, well, I'll just not be betrothed anymore to Katya. But at some point, he took 3,000 rubles that Katya gave him to give to her sister. Instead of sending it to her sister, he ends up spending about half of it on Grushinka. They get drunk and debaucherous. Is that a word? Can I get a... So then his problem kind of gets worse because now, now he has no money really at all like he didn't to begin with. But now he also has stolen money from Katya. In order to get a kind of clean break from her, he feels that he has to pay her back the money that he stole. Next, Dmitri tells Alyosha that he has been conspiring with Smerdyakov. Smerdyakov knows everything. Smerdyakov is the guy in the shadows who everybody is conspiring with and nobody knows it. Smerdyakov is consistently underestimated or mislabeled. They think he's afraid. They think that he's dumb. He is neither of those things. You may ask yourself, in what way are Dmitri and Smerdyakov conspiring? You may ask yourself, what has Smerdyakov done? And you may ask yourself, what has Smerdyakov done? told Dmitri. Fyodor Pavlovich has this secret knock system that if Grushinka comes to visit him, Smerdyakov can let Fyodor Pavlovich know that Grushinka is there. The only people who are supposed to know about these secret knocks are Smerdyakov and Fyodor Pavlovich. But Smerdyakov tells Dmitri. Dmitri is worried that Grushinka is going to show up at Fyodor Pavlovich's because he is irrationally jealous of his father. Yes, Fyodor Pavlovich did ask Grushinka to marry him. However, there is really no reason to believe that she is going to accept Fyodor Pavlovich's proposal. Dmitri probably doesn't want Grushinka even speaking to Fyodor Pavlovich because he really is jealous of him and he really hates him. He like hates the shit out of him. He despises him to the point where he says he's not planning on killing him, but he's scared he might because Fyodor Pavlovich is just so disgusting and offensive to him that he's afraid he'll lose his temper looking at his father's face and that he'll just kill him in a fit of rage but he doesn't want to kill his father. He just, he's worried he might. Dmitri does not want Groshinka to be with Fyodor Pavlovich. He is obsessed with the idea of her being with Fyodor Pavlovich and only with Fyodor Pavlovich. He is not jealous of anybody else. So Alyosha's like, what if Groshinka comes today? And he's like, um, I'll murder him. Alyosha just looks at him like, come on, bro. Don't murder dad. Please, please don't murder dad. Okay. And then Alyosha's like, God will make everything better. God didn't, God didn't make everything better. This is all still the same day as the monastery meeting. Oh, it's night now. So Dmitri persuades Alyosha to stop at Fyodor Pavlovich's before he goes to Katya's, which Alyosha is quick to do, possibly because he's not looking forward to going to Katya's. He seems to be a little bit afraid of her, either because he's attracted to her or because he's having some kind of portent about her later role in the downfall of his brother. I personally favor the latter as as it feeds into my delusion. The Brothers Karamazov is a horror novel. Don't add Alyosha now is walking into Fyodor Pavlovich's kitchen. Sitting at the table is Ivan, Fyodor Pavlovich, and Grigori. Smerdyakov is around somewhere and they're having coffee and they're talking and they're having this weird discussion about a soldier who was captured by Turkish Muslims and the Muslims are like, denounce Christ and we won't murder you terribly. And he says no. And then they kill him but he dies in the arms of Jesus. So Smerdyakov is like, I have an opinion about that. During this whole scene, Fyodor Pavlovich keeps referring to Smerdyakov as Balaam's ass. Balaam and the ass is a book from the Bible in which a donkey and a dude have a conversation. Numbers 22, 28. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> the best thing is that God's going to talk to this guy through the donkey. Now, of course, I don't know if the Russian translation of ass has the same connotation as if you were to call somebody an ass. So if he's if he's just saying Balaam's donkey, is that still funny? I'm not sure. It's clever because he's also calling him an ass. I just don't know if that's what's happening in the original Russian. I don't know. <gasps> oh, there's so many layers. 
So Grigori tells the story of the soldier and Smanjikov immediately kind of gives him a look and Grigori's like, what are, you, what are you looking at me about? What's that? What's that look? Balaam's ass is speaking, says Fyodor Pavlovich. Smanjikov is like, Nyeh. he was an idiot. That wasn't brave. That was stupid. You see, this soldier could have just denounced Christ, then come back and been like, sorry, now I get to be forgiven for doing that. And Grigori's just getting pissed off because how dare you, you soup maker? Because Smanjikov is the cook. He is Fyodor Pavlovich's cook as well as his valet. Apparently he makes a really good fish stew. I don't know how that's an insult. Then he argues that the very moment that you have the thought of possibly denouncing Jesus, which is bound to happen in any normal human being, when they're being faced with a threat of terrible, horrible death, you've already committed the crime. Once you've had that thought for like an instant, you are now cut off from the church. And so you might as well just go ahead and say it. Not a great argument. Fyodor Pavlovich points out to Ivan that this is all for him because Smirjikov is a fanboy of Ivan's. He really, really likes him and kind of wants to single white female him, maybe? he It's a creepy thing. Smirjikov is definitely saying all of this and trying to make a logical argument to impress Ivan because Ivan is the academic. Smirjikov is not an academic. He does not have an academic background. He kind of depends a little bit on the, on the fact that people will underestimate him. So he plays to that. He's not stupid. He's quite intelligent. He's not as educated as Ivan but he may be smarter. This whole thing with Smirjikov talking about God leads to our two little guys having a bit of an interaction for the first time in the book. Fyodor Pavlovich, he asks Ivan, is there a God? And Ivan says, no. He asks Alyosha, is there a God, Alyosha? And Alyosha's like, yes. Yes, there is. And then that kind of goes on for a bit. Is there an afterlife, Ivan? No. Is there an afterlife, Alyosha? Yes. There's no fighting here. They each state their belief very matter-of-factly. And then Fyodor Pavlovich says, Ivan's probably right. There probably isn't a god or a heaven or any of that junk. Fyodor Pavlovich goes into this whole bit about Ivan and Alyosha's mom. He's saying how she was always praying. She was very devout. And then he would spit on her icons and try to beat the mysticism out of her. It was very frustrating for Fyodor Pavlovich because he couldn't get her to stop being so goddamn religious. And Alyosha starts to cry. Sophia used to go into these kind of crying spells. And when Alyosha starts to cry, it reminds Fyodor Pavlovich of his mother. He's like, it's just like his mother, Ivan. It's just like his mother. And Ivan just goes, yeah. She was my mother too. Fyodor Pavlovich turns to him and is like, what? Your mother? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course she's your mother too. But he did kind of forget for a sec, didn't he? And I think it's an important little moment. Not only because we see Yvonne showing a little emotion, but because more importantly, because there's a reason that you write a certain thing, right? And so why are we getting that Fyodor Pavlovich forgets that Yvonne's mother is the same person as Alyosha's mother? And I think it's because they're so different. Yvonne and Alyosha are these opposite people. And I think that's just an underlining of how different they are. Before anything else can happen related to this crap, the Kool-Aid man busts in. He apparently got really, really overcome with the possibility that Grushinka might show up at Fyodor Pavlovich's, that he busts in the door again, and he's all like, oh yeah! Dimitri is acting very irrational. He's pointing at places going, she's hidden over there! Like, look at her, she's behind the curtain probably. He's very paranoid. He does at this point attack Fyodor Pavlovich and beat him up a little bit before Ivan, Alyosha, Grigori, and Smerdjikov can pull him off of his father. Alyosha is actually the one who kind of takes command of this whole situation. And Dimitri's like, I believe you, Alyosha, and nobody else. Is she here? And he's like, no, she's not here. Dimitri's like, I saw her coming in though. That's what? Every time I read this, I come up with more Smirjikov conspiracy theories. I think Smirjikov may have dressed up one of the ladies around the town to look like she was Grushinka and had her walk by just when he knew Dimitri was coming. I think he did. I think that's what happened. And you can't prove me wrong. Before he um, does finally leave, he turns to Fyodor Pavlovich and he's like, I regret nothing as he runs out of the room. Now amidst the chaos of all of this, Ivan turns to Alyosha and he's just like, wow, he's going to kill him. Dimitri's going to kill dad. And Alyosha says, God forbid. Ivan says, why? Who cares? He is not fond of his brother either. But why? Well, he's in love with Katya. Also, he just doesn't like people. Ivan's not a big people person. And his dad and his older brother, they're difficult people. They're, they're not easy to love. But then Yvonne kind of catches himself. He's like, of course, I won't let it happen. And that's an important statement. Yvonne says, I will not let him be murdered. Let the record show. Yvonne has just stated he will not let Fyodor Pavlovich be murdered. Isn't that exactly what he does? Blah, blah, blah. And then 
Ayosha leaves and he friggin' goes to Katya's. Katya's in a uncharacteristically good mood. She's a little bit Dimitri-esque in her frenziness, if you will. She's like, oh my god, I'm so glad you're here. La 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 la. And it's weird. Why is she in such a good mood? And then he brings up Grushinka. And she's like, oh, Grushinka, I love her. The big reveal as to why she's acting kind of strangely is that Grushinka is at Katya's. Do these two ladies know each other? Uh, Apparently they do now. So they hadn't really met prior to this but Katya decided to reach out to Grushinka about this whole mess and be like so look I'm betrothed to this guy and he's all in love with you and you're not like gonna marry him or anything are you and apparently and we don't see this conversation between them we get a summary from Katya that Grushinka was like yeah I'm not interested in him I'm gonna go marry this Polish officer who I fell in love with years ago and then we had sex and then he left me and so then and my life kind of fell apart. But he's back. This prince of a man? Nah, I'm good. This just fills Katya with a whole new level of Dostoevsky and joy. And Katya's like, thank you. You are the greatest woman ever to exist on planet Earth because you have decided not to marry the man who isn't in love with me at all, clearly. So Katya is insistent upon marrying, or at the very least, dedicating herself to Dimitri forever, regardless of how he feels. She's explaining all of this to Alyosha and kissing Grushinka on like the lips, on the hands. This is like the most sensual chapter of the book to the point where it actually makes Alyosha blush a bit. This is a slightly sexy scene. Then Grushinka just suddenly is like, nah, I changed my mind. Maybe I'll keep playing with Dmitri for a while. Not ready to put him back in the box yet. And Katya's like, you slut! At which point, Grushinka kind of demolishes Katya. Grushinka shoots back. I'm not the one who meets men in the dark for money. Of course, referencing what happened with Dimitri. Now, Katya does not think Dimitri went around telling people about this, but finds out right in this moment that not only did he tell people, he told Grushinka. Grushinka is used to being called a slut and a whore. How dare she have believed a man who told her that he loved her, the Polish officer, and then fell for this man and then allowed herself to actually have any kind of relations with him only to be abandoned by him so that's all her fault because it's the 19th century and also because having sex is bad so Grushinka has lived a good amount of time now with that reputation with people curling those kinds of insults at her she is hardened by the world and rebellious she has a mind of her own she doesn't get told what to do and she messes with people if she wants to Grushinka is living with an old merchant named Kuzma Kuzmich. There's plenty of whispering about whether or not she's been doing it with him. Was she giving him a little something something? And it seems much more likely that he's more of a father figure to her or even a friend. It's not clear though, but because she one time did have sex out of wedlock, all bets are off here. Whereas Katya would still be a virgin, most definitely. There but for the grace of Dimitri go she. If he had insisted she had sex with him that night, she would have. Katya is willing to embrace Grushinka. She's like, I want to believe you're a good person and I want to be good to you because I need something from you. Katya is in a much more privileged position. Grushinka is a pariah. So when Katya calls her a whore, she gets the satisfaction to hurl something right at her that's true and is something that Grushinka herself may have been accused of in a similar way. For Katya, this is the most devastating thing that could happen is that people start to see her this way. If people find out about that, even though she didn't sleep with him, the fact that she went to him with the possibility of sleeping with him would be a scandal itself. Katya loses her shit. Katya goes at Grushinka with the intent to physically harm her. She is about to cut a bitch. Alyosha stops her and Grushinka muahahas right on out of there. Katya is like, get out. She tells Alyosha to get out because she really just doesn't want to be around anybody right now. Alyosha's like, with pleasure. I really want to leave. So that's good. On his way out the door, one of Katya's maids stops Alyosha and gives him a letter that Lisa, Madame Hokokova's daughter, had left for him. He's in kind of a state of shock after what he just witnessed. The scandal of it all. He just puts the letter in his pocket and he walks out the door. And he's walking home. And because he's everywhere all the time, Dimitri just pops pops out and goes, your money or your life and pretends he's robbing him because ha ha, that's 
funny. And Ayusha, he's had a day. So come on, Dimitri. Dimitri is kind of the slender man and Kool-Aid man had a baby. Dimitri's slender man powers will be discussed in a later episode. Anyway, Dimitri says to Alyosha, I knew you were going to have to come this way to go home. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. How long were you waiting? Do you do anything other than hide behind things waiting to jump out at people or stand at walls waiting to bust in them? I assume he doesn't use doors. You really are not going to be able to change my mind. Rethink your life, Dimitri. That's no way to, that's no way to live. And Dimitri's like, tell me everything. And Alyosha tells him what just happened with Grushinka and Katya. And Dimitri thinks that's classic Grushinka. Grushinka's hilarious. And I know she's terrible, Alyosha. I know what she did was really mean and horrible. And that's what I love about her. And I love her so much. Oh my God, I'm going to run off. And then he takes off. Alyosha finally gets home, opens the letter. It's a love letter from Lisa asking him to marry her. He feels guilty because he thinks he's not supposed to have any kind of feelings for women, apparently. But then he kind of checks himself and he's just like, that's sweet. He smiles and goes to bed. And that's the end of that. On the next episode, we're going to get a little monkey with it. Alyosha gonna get bit and also I might get my shit together. <laughs> <laughs>